So the best laptop bag that I've used over the last 10 months is this Herschel Sanford bag. Val, my helper, thinks that it's this Case Logic bag. She's not wrong, neither am I, because, well, we're kind of looking for different things when it comes to laptop bags. The one laptop bag that we both agreed that everybody should stay away from is this bag from Swiss Gear. You might as well be wearing an empty cardboard box with a rope attached to it. Now that's the conclusion that we've come to after spending a ton of time with the Amazon Basics bag. One from Samsonite, Swiss Gear, Case Logic, TomTalk, and Book. Now if you need all the deets, keep watching, and after all those deets, we're gonna give you a buyer's guide because there is just so many bags out there and we can't review them all. We just, just can't. And so we've come up with a bunch of questions that you can ask yourself to figure out which bag to get for you. So let's keep going. At Mobile Reviews, eh? Monty and I based all our reviews on actual usage. Now this video isn't sponsored, which means we bought all these laptop bags ourselves. So thousand dollars worth of bags. And I'm still a little butt hurt that I bought, spent $200 on this book bag. Like this is a terrible, terrible bag. Now to come out with this list of bags that we're showing you in this video, we just basically went with the most popular ones from popular brands. For each bag, we hauled a ton of doohickeys with them, poured water on it to see water resistance. I took it through an airport obstacle course, a pseudo airport obstacle course. And we also cooked with them to see kind of how terrible the straps were after standing with them for a long period of time. Now I've done all this to ensure that this review isn't going to be a 14 minute video of a guy putting his hands slowly into every one of the pockets. There's a lot of stuff in here, so if there there's one particular bag that you are more interested in, do check out the time codes in the description section below to jump to the appropriate bag. First up is the Timbuktu Classic Messenger Bag. The pros is that this product has an extra strap for added stability, it has a ton of capacity, and it has a lot of designs and colors. And the cons is that it's not great for carrying a laptop, and it just literally feels like a giant bag sometimes. Now I'm not quite sure if the Timbuktu Classic Messenger Bag is actually a laptop bag, because the website says it is but the dedicated laptop storage area seems, I'll say, a little weak. Unlike the average smartphone, most laptops have a relatively sharp edge, so the lack of padding really makes the laptop very pronounced in this bag. So if you do get the Timbuktu Classic Messenger, consider getting a padded sleeve to go with this bag, which seems like odd advice for a laptop bag. I know. This Timbuktu Messenger bag is made from Cordura fabric, which doesn't mean much given that there's a multitude of Cordura fabric types out there, but in general, this material is going to wear well over time. One of the things I really do like about the Timbuktu Messenger bag are all the different colors and designs that you can choose from. I'm not a splashy person, but even I can't stand the drab black laptop bag. When it comes to water resistance, the Cordura fabric offers great water protection. Zippers are usually terrible for water resistance, but the classic Messenger bag doesn't have any exposed, so the contents of your bag are going to stay dry longer. Now you can store a lot of things in this bag. The large pockets work well with oversized items and there's even a dedicated space for a water bottle. There isn't a lot of small pockets to store smaller doohickeys, but enough for a pen, a bunch of business cards and something larger like a portable pack of facial tissues. There are three smaller zippered compartments for loose items. The strap on the Timbuktu Classic Messenger bag is quite wide, which means you'll be able to haul larger things around a bit longer. There is a secondary strap on the Timbuktu, which also improves the stability of the bag on your body, which is nice. Now in general, the bag is fairly easy to use if you can get used to the uh, pretty tough Velcro. It does take a lot of effort to kind of pry it open, but you know, that's kind of a compromise you have with this kind of giant flap messenger bag. At the end of the day for 80 bucks, the Timbuktu messenger bag is a good deal. Now, over the last six months, every single time I needed to move something more, uh, that's too much to handle for just two hands. Like for example, if I'm going to Ikea to get stuff for the, the filming area, I grab my Timbuktu messenger bag because it, I know it can store a lot of stuff. And so just being able to have this lying around, I found very, very useful. It is really the only bag that I've used not as a laptop bag outside of all the uh, products that are reviewed in this video. Also, Monty fits in it. Next up is the Case Logic Breaker Messenger Bag. The pros of that, this is a very comfortable bag to carry and it's very portable. The cons is that because of that portableness, there's 
less capacity. Another con is that, well, this is the only design option that you get. Now this Case Logic Breaker Messenger Bag is a great handling bag. For those who only need to carry like a laptop and a notebook, this product is probably going to be the one to get. The laptop storage area is well padded and my MacBook Pro fit quite well in it, which is a stark contrast compared to the Timbuktu Messenger Bag, which has no padding to it. Uh, the Case Logic Bag is made from super duper descriptive polyester. Thank you, uh, Case Logic website. And again, it only has one design. It's this color black. Now from a water protection standpoint. The material repels water quite well and the zippers on the breaker did absorb water slowly over time, which is better than most zippers on laptop bags. Now when it comes to overall storage, the slimmer design of the breaker bag means that you can't carry as much, but that's fine if all you need to do is to carry a laptop and a notebook and a couple of small doohickeys. The breaker messenger bag is, again, going to be really, really great for you. There are two zippered compartments with one on the flap and one on the inside of the bag that can store medium-sized doohickeys. Now when it comes to carrying the bag, there is a strap. <laughs> the bag isn't too bad as a travel companion as it does offer a suitcase handling strap and the smaller size of the bag means that you have to be more intentional with what you carry. All in all, this is just a very compact, well-performing laptop bag. Next up is the world's worst laptop bag, which is also called the Swiss Gear International Carry-On Size Laptop Bag with Portable Pocket Charger. <sighs> The pros is that this is the largest capacity bag on this list. The cons is that, well, this handles like a box with straps attached to it. And the laptop's actually very hard to take out of this product. Now, if you're wondering how useful this Swiss gear bag is, take a medium sized Amazon box, tape an old belt or a dog leash to it, throw a bunch of crap into it, and wear it around for about 30 seconds. That's what it's like using this product. It's terrible. Now, I've personally seen and used a lot of Swiss gear laptop bags as they seem to have the market kind of cornered on providing branded bags for corporations. Now, you would assume with those relationships with those corporations that they would design bags that are generally suited for business people, that are just generally bad, better. Not better. This is a batter product. Like it really boggles my mind how poorly this thing works. This is the only bag that allows you to custom fit the padded laptop pouch. So if you've got a MacBook Pro 15 inch that you're going to upgrade to 16 inch pretty soon, this might be a handy feature. And that's like me really grasping at really positive things to say about this product. But you do need to be mindful when you're pulling your laptop out of the bag because it, the corners of this bag will actually catch on the edges of your laptop. And if you're not careful, will force you to drop your laptop back into the pouch. And this great design feature is that the pouch sits on the bottom of the bag. So you're basically dropping your laptop onto the ground. Like, way to go, Swiss gear. The laptop bag is made from polyester, which does a great job of absorbing water. So if you want to break your laptop as well as soak up spilled water, just throw your Swiss gear laptop bag on top of it. The version of this bag comes in a wonderful color palette of black. There is a slot for your tablet located on the front pocket, but the limpy handles more often than not get in the way, which is, you know, super annoying. Now, out of all the bags that I've used over the last few months, this one has the largest capacity. There are two large zippered compartments, one smaller, uh, though smaller, the size is relatively because that small pocket can hold a tablet, an iPad Pro to be exact. So, you know, relative comparisons. Now this bag actually reminds me of my younger years, like probably 20 years ago when I was working as an aerial surveyor and watching all those pilots haul around their giant bags filled with flight documents, approach vectors, and those maps and everything. There's a lot of dividers in, in this bag to kind of help you organize all your documents. The bad thing about these dividers is that they're not attached to the bottom of the bag. So if you put smaller doohickeys in the dividers, they'll just end up kind of pooling at the bottom of the bag. The only thing I had trouble in terms of carrying around was my Studio 3s as every pocket just seemed to be a little too tight for those headphones. Overall, using this bag is not great. The limpy handles, tiny strap, the giant bag that just makes everything very, very awkward. Uh, as a side note, the limpy handles also twist themselves up really easily. So, you know, that's a really good look. Uh, the plus side, plus, I guess another plus thing is that it has the uh, a little tab to help you put it on your suitcase quicker. That's like two good things about this bag. The tab and the customizable laptop pouch. Not two great features to be proud of. Way to go, Swiss gear. Next up, we got the bag that's most popular with millennials. It's a Herschel Sanford laptop bag. The pros is that there's a ton of different ways to carry the bag. There are large handles, there's large capacity and really big pockets inside the bag. And there's a lot of different colors and designs to choose from. The cons is that there's no compartment for the tablet. Laptop removal is sometimes mildly annoying. And with the giant handles, it's a little more awkward to use every once in a while. Now the Herschel Sanford bag is a very handy bag. <laughs> I just, I love these handles. Handle, handy bag, handles, get it? It's missing a couple features, but the overall functionality of the bag overshadows the shortcomings. For me personally, I really enjoy these handles because, well, it just, Herschel kind of looked at it and said, 
This is going to be a bag first that can carry a laptop rather than a laptop that has a bag because everything else, a lot of these other bags, the handles seem like an afterthought. Add to the mix that you can turn this into a backpack. Pretty awesome. Which means for me, I don't have to swap bags between on days where I decide to go, you know, bike to work or have to walk a certain amount of time distance. The Sanford bag's laptop compartment isn't as snug as other bags, so your laptop will slide around a little bit. There is a clip to secure it, but it could be better in my opinion. The one thing that may get annoying is sometimes the edges of the bag will catch on the laptop, forcing you to drop your laptop back into your bag. And like the Swiss gear, the bottom of the laptop compartment sits on the ground. There, will, there is a little bit of padding, so you might not hurt your laptop as much. The laptop bag is made for polyester and despite looking like it's quite water resistant, it absorbs water like a towel. Material is lined with a layer of plastic on the inside, so moisture might not reach the inside of the bag, but it's still a little unnerving to see the bag absorb water better than most microfiber cloths. Now, unlike the average laptop bag, the Sanford line of bags has a variety of different colors and designs. Our Raven Crosshatch style bag has a red and white interior, which sits apart from most of the drab black and gray that's found on most laptop bags. When it comes to storage capacity, I was able to haul around Around all of my large items plus a small tripod not in the main compartment now that might not seem like a big deal for some people but I'm a youtuber so I always have a small tripod on me for whatever reason and so being able to carry it around in this gigantic front pocket is way better than carrying it around in the uh, other compartment with all my other electronics and other expensive doohickeys the bag also stands up on its own quite easily so you don't have to worry about your laptop filled bag from flopping over unexpectedly the only thing I wish that the Herschel bag had was a slot for my tablet having my iPad Pro bounce around with everything else in the main compartment is a little unnerving. I think the scratch on my iPad Pro came from something that was inside this bag, which sucks. There are three zipper compartments with only one zipper compartment being on the inside of the bag. Overall, there's so much capacity that it held all my doohickeys quite easily. The only thing I struggled with with this bag was carrying like loose pieces of paper. Now, Every once in a while, I still use paper copies for my video scripts. And so you put them in uh, into the bag and then throughout the day, it just kind of like sides to the bottom and all the other stuff just kind of like has a little dance party on it. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of like Monty or anybody who's a dog owner when they're trying to find like the proper spot to sleep on in their bed, they go. That's what that paper looks like. It looks like it's been mauled by a bunch of stuff when you put it into this laptop bag. I'm not done with this bag yet. I'm gonna talk about why I love these handles so much. They're just, they're so big. And just, I didn't think that having a good set of handles on a bag would make a big difference in my day-to-day -day life. Pulling this laptop bag out of the back of my car uh, from behind the driver's seat it's so easy with this bag. Like I just, the big handles just make such a big difference. Like I just, I look at some of the other bags and the next bag I'm talking about is going to be the TomTalk. That one has the worst handle ever. And so using that product compared to this product is like a world of difference. Like I feel angry sometimes when I use the TomTalk bag and I don't feel that angry when I'm using the Sanford bag. I will admit that the handles will get in the way every once in a while, but being able to carry things normally as a bag in this product, I, I, it's so hard to explain. It's just, it's just so nice. Last thing I will talk about, the last standout feature I'll talk about is the ability to wear this product as a backpack. There are two straps that are hidden in the back of this thing. So right now they're tucked away. So you can't really tell that it's a backpack, but they, uh, they are there. The backpack functionality isn't built for long-term usage, but was generally comfortable enough for me to use on my 20 minute bike rides to work. So. Yay. Next up is the TomTalk laptop crossbody messenger bag. Honestly, this bag, if you don't like the uh, general design of the Herschel and you need something with a bit more capacity than the Case Logic breaker bag, then you're going to get this TomTalk bag. Now, I'm usually very wary of Amazon only brands, but TomTalk has proven to me over the last few years to be an outlier because their products are generally well designed and are of decent quality. Now, there are a couple of smart design features within this bag as it allows you to store a laptop, a tablet, as well as two water bottles. <laughs> The device pockets are lined with a bit of felt, which will help the scratch protection of your devices. The cover of the bag can be attached via Velcro or clips, so you get to choose how annoying it is to remove your laptop. And one of the odd things is that the cover on the bag also has Velcro tabs that can be released to make your laptop coming out easier <laughs> or your laptop harder to slide out. I don't know why those things are there, but they are. The bag is made from nondescript nylon, uh, but it provides decent water protection and the zippers are quite water resistant as well. Out of my grouping of these laptop bags, the TomTop bag is the only 
one with a side pocket that is actually kind of useful in certain instances. Another unique feature is on the inside of the bag, there is a small RFID safe pocket, but it seems a little too small. You can't just throw your entire wallet into there. It's maybe hold one or two cards. My only complaint about the TomTok bag is that the secondary pockets just seem a little too small. Instead of having two tiny zipper compartments, it should have just had one larger zipper compartment. The TomTok bag has decent capacity as it's able to carry, as I said before, laptop, tablet, a couple notebooks, water bottle, or three of them, and whatever doohickeys you have. Everything is secured using buckles as well as Velcro straps. Uh, which is kind of handy depending on how you want to secure this bag. Now the only thing that I didn't like about this product was the handle. Like this handle seems more like an afterthought. Like the designers at TomTalk were like, we've just designed the best laptop bag ever. Oh crap, we need a handle. We're just going to sew it on, you know, half-assedly. Not half-assedly, it's just, it's kind of an afterthought. Like carrying this bag filled with a laptop and an iPad and all the notebooks that I carry around is unnerving because it just, everything seems really off-centered. So I go from, you know, carrying my Herschel bag out of the back of my car really easily, everything just seems centered to this, where everything just seems like I'm going to bash my laptop into the side of the car because this thing just, it's just, yeah, terrible. It also has this, you know, the best feature about the Swiss gear crappy bag the giant Amazon back strap bag thing. I was just talking about three bags, two bags ago. This bag has the uh, handle for the, or slot for the telescopic handle as well. Again, with all things considered, if you don't like the Herschel bag, don't like the case launcher bag, this TomTok bag, pretty awesome. I've recorded this section of the video four times now. I'm so sick of these bags. So sick of reviewing laptop bags. This roundup anyways. <laughs> so look overexposed. Oh well. Next up we got the Samsung Xenon 3 Tech Locker. The pros is that this has a lot of dividers. Large capacity, the cons, it still has that big boxy feel to it. The large laptop compartment sits in the middle of the bag with the tablet pocket right in front of it. There is a nylon strap that holds both together, which is nice, keep it everything secure. My MacBook Pro fits quite loose in the pocket even with the strap pulled to its tightest setting. Samsung offers an amazing color selection, like all the other ones, of black. And the outer shell of the bag is made from 1680 denier ballistic polyester, which means it will be quite a break resistant. Now I do have to poke fun at Samsung as the website describes the Xenon 3 Technocker as a modern, contemporary, and feature-rich bag. It also has a timeless classic design with well-considered personal electronics organization. First of all, modern, but also a timeless classic design. Like, does, how does that even make sense? The Xenon 3 t literally feels like a box with a strap and that's modern. And well-considered electronics organization, is that what you call having a tablet pocket that's too small? Or having pictures tell me what I should be putting in each one of the pockets? Like, you can't tell me what to do, I'm a millennial. Now in terms of water resistance, if you're able to funnel all the rain from a downpour into a 1680 denier laptop bag is gonna be fine. But the zippers are thirsty gangsters. I don't know if I use that right. They're just very, very water absorbent. Now in terms of overall storage capacity, the Xenon 3.0 wins. The large size coupled with the divider allows you to separate out all your larger doohickeys. You literally could store 80 choirs or four reams of paper in this bag. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could do it. There are three external zipper pockets with two smaller ones on the front of the bag, which are easy to access. The padded vinyl wrap textured handles on the bag are small and flimsy, especially if you're carrying around 80 choirs of paper. And the shoulder strap is a little too small to do any sort of commuting with. There is a pocket for the telescopic handle of your suitcase, which is gonna be a godsend since lugging this oversized box of straps is in the airport, it's just gonna be terrible. Now, before you get to the last uh, few bags in this video, if you're finding it useful, uh, what I've done, uh, considering getting these bags through the Amazon links in the description section below, um, if there are any sort of discounts that I'd be able to secure for you guys through, um, whatever affiliate program, I'll try to post them in the pinned comment. Next up is the Amazon Basics bag. The pros is that it's a good price, good size. It's very basic. The cons is that it's kind of basic, it feels cheap, and the storage capacity is, well, a little low. This Amazon Basics bag is the cheapest bag on this list, which might be a good thing if you're looking for something to occasionally haul your laptop bag around. Um, and like most Amazon uh, Basic products, it just basically gets the job done. Like the minimal amount of work required has been done with this bag. There's no more, no less. It's not well, but it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just there. The Amazon Basics bag isn't tailored to fit a specific size of laptops, just ones that have a screen diagonal uh, between 15 and 16 inches. So your MacBook Pro is going to feel fine in this, though it may be a little loose. Unlike other products in this video, the laptop slot isn't padded nor is it raised. So if you accidentally drop this bag with your laptop in it, well, it might break. I will note that there is a tablet compartment, but it's not large enough to fit 
a uh, iPad. So I'm guessing it's gonna fit whatever Amazon Fire tablet that you might have perfectly. In terms of color, the Amazon Basic comes in glorious black with Amazon orange stitching. So they just kind of fit right in with the rest of the boring laptop bags in this video. The exterior is fairly water resistant, but the zippers were terrible. So don't take this one out in the rain. The bag isn't that large and has two additional zipper uh, compartments, which means you can store quite a bit in it since there are no extra pockets. There are dividers on the inside of the uh, bag, but they're made from a super thin material. So, you know, it just, again, this bag is cheap. It feels cheap. The handles on the bag are decent and don't feel like the bag is off center like the TomTalk bag. Uh, and the high quality uh, shoulder strap squeaks as you walk around with it. So make sure that you're listening to music when you're walking around as the little mouse in the strap is gonna drive you crazy. Again, if you're on a very tight budget, get this laptop bag, it gets the job done, just not well. Next up is the in-case black reform case. The pros is that this is very, very slim. It has the best laptop protection out of all the bags that I've used and it has a very large handle. The cons is that there's not a lot of carrying capacity. Out of all the laptop bags I've used in this video, I felt that my laptop was gonna be the safest in the in-case black reform case. It fit my MacBook Pro like a fitted suit, like it just fits it very well. Now, if you don't have a MacBook Pro, then this bike bag will probably not work out as well for you. If all you need to do is to carry your laptop, tablet, and a couple of doohickeys, then the in-case black reform case is all you're going to need. This case allows you to carry the bare minimum in terms of working with your laptop. Now, the laptop sits in a faux fur lining on one side and a piece of plastic with cloth covering on the other side. This piece of plastic has a soft feel to it and it's called Tensor Light. You know, fancy. Ooh. I will note that the laptop area unzips fully, which according to InCase, is supposed to make it uh, through the airport easier as you can lay it out flat easily with your laptop on top of it. The laptop bag is made from Eco Dyed 300D Poly Ecoya. I have no idea what that means. Sounds cool. It has a softer feel than most of the other materials found on other bags in this video, but that really isn't a big selling point for me. But what I really do like about the EcoDive 300D Poly Ecoya is that it has a bit of friction to it, so whenever you place your laptop bag behind you, it kind of stays on your butt. <laughs> it doesn't move around, it doesn't slide around easily. For this particular bag, you only have one choice for color, so you know you better be fond of Heather Black. At least it's not black, it's Heather Black. When it comes to water resistance, the in-case performed better than the average laptop bag as water did absorb over time, but it was quite slow. So unless you're planning on walking a downpour for hours on end, water shouldn't be an issue for you with this bag. I've hammered it so much in this video, you can't carry much. If all you need to do is haul around a laptop and a leather folio and you know, a pencil. <laughs> the in-case reform uh, will suffice, but if you need more, and I mean like just a tiny bit more, you're gonna be in trouble. There's not a lot of space to store stuff, like the front pocket. Well, that's not even a pocket, I thought it was. This bag is not conducive to overstuffing. One of the standard features of this bag is the large handle that sits along the center line of the bag. This large handle makes it easier to move from place to place. Again, it's refreshing not to have to fight with a shoulder strap every once in a while when I'm removing my laptop from my car. Shoulder strap is a little smaller than others, but that kind of works given that you won't be carrying much in this bag. Hauling my laptop around while I did errands didn't bother me until about 30 minutes in, I'll say. Now, despite being marketed with an hour or port traveler in mind, the reform case doesn't allow you to stack it on your telescopic luggage handles, which seems odd because it's marketed as an airport friendly thing, but you can't. Eh. I don't know. It is a smaller bag, so carrying it around won't be as terrible, but still, it's just, you're waiting in line at security. You just want to take a load off your shoulders. The last bag in this video is this Book Shadow. I'll be honest with you, this was an incredibly disappointing uh, product. And the only reason why I bought this product was because my previous book laptop bag I used for about 10 years, and that thing was pretty awesome. And I figure since everything was free to do a, to get a new one, and I figure, hey, I can make a video about, out of it. So I went and bought this product. And the craziest thing about this product was that they stopped producing it like two months after I bought it. So like, there's just, this thing's just so frustrating. <laughs> um, but we're gonna get through it. I'm gonna go through it so quickly because the more I talk about it, the angrier I will become. The pros is that this comes with a tracking feature if you sign up for it. Cons is that the custom front latch is terrible to use, has really, really poor carrying capacity, and it's just a very hard bag to use. The book laptop bag is the only product in my roundup where I just felt like they just half acidly wrapped a bag around a laptop. The laptop area is large, but has an annoying Velcro strap to secure the laptop. There are some things that just don't need to be remade, you know, things like the Mummy movie, Scarface, Heat. Seriously, like quick release buckles and Velcro just work incredibly well. This custom latch hardware, it's just, it's just so annoying. Like it just really boggles my mind that you would, they would put something like that that makes it harder for you to access your stuff. Like it doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. 
and they market it as something that is good for you. Like, boom! So for this buyer's guide, it's gonna be kind of simplistic and I guess that's kind of the point. The first question is silly, but I have to ask it, or you have to ask yourself is, what are you gonna use this bag for? School, work, travel, or how much of that stuff are you gonna be doing with that bag? And that, the answer to that question is really gonna be governed by what's the biggest thing that you're gonna carry in that bag. Now for me, it was between bouncing between my home office, my rental office, as well as working out at coffee shops. The biggest thing that I had to carry around were my Studio 3s. And now I know I could carry my $300 headphones on the outside of my bag, but that just seems silly to me. So the only bags that could do that easily would be this Timbuktu bag and this Herschel Sanford bag. And well, as you know, <laughs> carrying the laptop in this thing isn't great. So I default to the Herschel bag. And I think that's probably the simplest way to figure out what kind of bag to get. You know, do you have a lot of textbooks to haul? Because then, you know, you're not gonna get this in case reform. You could get away with the Tom Talk. You couldn't get away with this stupid book shadow. Let me give you another example. In my career, I had to carry a lot of pens. I ended up being a project manager at an engineering firm. So I spent a lot of time marking stuff up, traveling to different offices and saying, this is wrong, this is wrong this is right. And so I had to have a lot of pens, you know, highlighters, post-it notes. And so being able to store all the little doohickeys, you know, the Samsonite tech locker isn't terrible. It's got a lot of slots for me to like carry my calculator and stuff. You know, it's got a lot of stuff for, oh, not that pocket, this pocket, pens and whatnot, places to put my cards when I'm meeting new clients and whatnot. So stuff like this, it's not a great bag, but you have to take into consider how many doohickeys can you carry, you know, compared to the uh, Herschel. It's still a good amount of doohickeys, but not as much as the Samsonite. So, you know, that's another thing to consider. You know, if I look back to my schooling, which would have been 20 years ago for university. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, high school 20 years ago, 15, 16, 17 years ago for university, and then about 10 years ago for my master's. And by that time, by the time I was doing my master's, everything was electronic. So I didn't need to carry textbooks a lot. I still had several, but it was two big binders with a bunch of printed notes that I had to carry around. Herschel could handle that very easily. Timbuktu could, Tom Talk would, right? So it's the largest thing that you have is gonna govern what bag you're gonna buy. Now, the second thing, going back to the question, are you using them for work, school, and travel, is how far are you actually gonna be walking with this bag? You know, if it's five, 10 minutes to a bus stop or something, then yeah, you could get away with, you know, go back to the Samsonite. You could get away with the Swiss gear. They're not terrible for that short period of time. But if you're doing, you know, 15, 20 minutes of walking, I found that this in case, with the added friction on the material, it definitely helps in just not having that thing just constantly rub against the side of your body and just kind of like, throws you off balance a tiny bit. And if you're going even further, you know, stuff like the Timbuktu, I know this is technically a bike messenger bag, I think. So being able to have that strap kind of cross, come across your waist and you got a shoulder strap kind of alleviates the weight on that one shoulder or whatever shoulder that you're wearing it. Um, and finally, again, back to the Herschel bag, it turns into a backpack, right? So this is just a very functional product and it's silly why nobody else makes stuff as functional as this product in this grouping anyways. And the last thing to consider is price. Don't owe, I always default to, if I pay more money, I'm probably gonna get a better product and that's definitely not the case. Swiss gear bag, totally brutal. The book shadow, totally brutal. But on the other spectrum, so Amazon basis bag, super cheap, still kind of brutal. So don't let the price drive what you think is gonna be a good product. And I'm gonna lump, you know, the overall design, the aesthetics of the bag with the price is that you will kind of pay a bit more for bags that look a little nicer. This looks nice. The amount of customization you can do with this Timbuktu bag is so cool. Like I, watching Val edit the video and stuff and like, do, 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 all these things are changing. I was like, I might buy another one because I can customize the look of it. Again, I'm not a flashy person wearing a normal t-shirt, but you know, when it comes to laptop bags, apparently I'm really bored 
of the black. So that's all I got for this video. Question, comments, leave them down there. If there's a specific bag that you really want me to take a look at, just let me know. Um, let me know if the buyer's guide, if it was helpful or if I missed something. Uh, that's kind of got. First time watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, produce content four times a month, once a week, maybe. <laughs> that's kind of all I got. Go, go, go. Oh, fuck off. Internal temperature. I want to cool mother. First, I'm so cold. Shoulders look funny. Oh, so effing. <sighs> Your bag. I'm not going to make it to the gym, am I? <laughs>